Hey, what's up, everyone? What is up? This is Julie here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, guys, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the critical element steps in the testable skill assist to ambulate using a transfer belt. OK, but before I get started uh, with the video, I just want to um, tell you to subscribe to my channel, right? Smash that subscribe button, kick the like button on this video and all of my other videos. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content, okay? Uh, very important for you all to smash or kick the like button on this video because that will let me know whether or not uh, these critical element steps videos are helpful to you okay um i think i've um on the other videos i think i you know got like 40 something likes i need more than that guys okay i need more than that to um so i can continue making these videos okay that will let me know plus it will make my channel more recognizable here on youtube and also in google all right um so just uh, uh, some information that i want to give to you all um in regards to testing your test results um if you are testing under pearson view now for the state of texas for the state of texas you are no longer going to receive your results right then and there, okay? You have to wait four to 24 hours before you get your results. Not sure if it's the same for all Pearson View states, but for the state of Texas, that's how it is, okay? So you gotta try to you know, maintain that anticipation, right? Um, two, um, I want to um, tell you all about my new vlog channel, The Bougie Instructor, right? Um, this channel that I've created, I don't have any videos on it yet, but I will. I promise you I will. I'm going to try to upload the first video this week. Uh, this channel is going to be another training channel, but it's going to be for both uh, the student, candidate, and instructor, okay? This channel is going to, um, I've already set up all the playlists. Um, this channel, I want to blow up like this channel has, okay? Because it's going to be a lot of information, um, a lot of background um, videos, you know, scenes on how I, um, you know, set up my classroom, um, again, a lot of information for you, the nurse aide student, and you, the instructor. Um, it's going to be a lot of giveaways. So, if in your in your privacy settings, if you have it to where your name cannot be seen when you subscribe to the channel, you might want to change that. Okay, um, because the giveaways are are going to be for those folks who I can actually see their name. I can actually verify that they are a subscriber because those uh, folks are the only ones that are going to be eligible for the giveaways. What am I going to give away? I don't know yet. Okay, but I'm going to think of something, right? Um, so I have left the descript or I have left the link to the bougie instructor in the description area of this video. So if you click on that link, um, it will take you directly to the bougie instructor vlogs channel and you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also ring that notification bell on um, my bougie instructor channel. So you'll be notified uh, when I do upload videos, okay? The second thing that I want to um, reiterate to you all is that I'm, I'm still receiving a lot of comments and questions regarding, um, you know, my instructor told, you know, showed us how to perform a certain skill. This way, you're demonstrating it totally different. I'm confused, what do I do? And as I always tell you, tell you um i'm always going to tell you to follow your instructor's lead okay um and when i say this i don't i don't want to sound mean i don't want to i don't want you to think i'm being rude or sarcastic but i am not the nurse educator okay to step on another nurse educator's toes i'm not the nurse educator to disrespect another nurse educator and i feel 
that is what I would be doing if I told you, hey, don't listen to your instructor, perform these testable skills the way that I'm demonstrating in my video. Um, and that I, I feel that will be very disrespectful. So that's why I do not say that. What I do tell you, um, again, is to follow your instructor's lead, okay? And then you have to make up your own mind how you are going to perform these skills during testing, whether you're going to perform them in the manner that your instructor trained you to do so, or if you're going to um, perform these testable skills in the manner as I demonstrate in my videos. That is going to be left up to you to decide, not me. I'm not going to get in that mix. No, I'm not, because I'm not going to disrespect your instructor like that, okay? What I will tell you is that folks do who do perform their skills exactly as I have demonstrated in my videos are passing, okay? Um, so with that being said, again, um, you know, not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but you do have to follow your instructor's lead. That is what I'm going to advise you, whether or not during testing you want to perform the skills as your instructor has trained you or how I demonstrate in my videos, you know, you're going to have to make up your own mind on whether or not to do that. Okay. Which one to do. All right. Okay. Um, and Third, um, on my Etsy storefront, all of the items on my Etsy storefront are digital. Okay, digital, meaning once you purchase those items, they are available for immediate download, okay? And the reason why I made everything digital on my Etsy storefront is because it's just me, right? It's just me, and it was becoming... Uh, very time consuming. It was costing a lot of money for me, especially when it came to my book, to print my book, to bind it, and then to ship it out to you all. So I actually, when it came to my book, I actually got, uh, you know, uh, advice from a subscriber that said, hey, you need to make your book digital, right? Um, and that will alleviate all of that. And I'm like, you know what? Why didn't I think of that, right? So that is why everything is digital. So you have to have uh, the know-how and the means to be able to download once you purchase those items, okay? And when I say the means, meaning that, um, you know, in the know-how first you have to know how to download and usually it'll be a, a either a download link or a download arrow and you click on that and that will um download it to your computer or to your smartphone the means you have to have a computer okay and you have to have a tablet or a smartphone to be able to download these files plus you have to make sure you have enough storage especially if you purchase my book, smash that CNA exam, okay? Because the book is like 128 pages. So you have to make sure that you have enough storage either on your, your computer, your tablet, or your phone, okay? All right? If y'all have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. My Etsy storefront uh, link is www.etsy.com slash shop slash C N A quest. That's Q U E S T. Okay. Oh, and I wanted to tell y'all also on my, um, vlog channel, if you subscribe to my vlog channel, um, y'all are going to be privy to all, uh, well, not all, but most, um, of the new study items, study guides, um, that I, put or place on my Etsy storefront, okay? So right now I'm working on crossword puzzles, right? And my students are loving them. They are they are so loving them, right? Because they're, um, you know, they're not only having fun doing it, but they're also learning um, and they're also retaining, you know, that information when it comes to the manual skills, right? So y'all will be privy to some of those, whereas those who are not subscribed are gonna have to go to my Etsy store front and purchase them, right? So that's another reason why you want to subscribe to my new channel, The Bougie Instructor Vlogs, okay? A lot of giveaways, a lot of challenges. Um, once I get that channel up and, and running right now, again, there are no videos on there, uh, but I do 
plan on uploading the first video this weekend okay so click on that link in the area or excuse me the description area of this video um, and subscribe okay and again you may want to change your privacy settings if i am not able to see your name okay as a subscriber all right uh, because those are the folks who will uh be um be eligible for um, you know, the giveaways, uh, you know, I have to be able to see your name to verify that you are a subscriber. Okay. All right, guys. And last, but definitely not least, thank you so much for your continued prayers for my husband. He's been having it really, really rough uh, these past six days. Um, his liver congestion is causing him a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, uh, a complete loss of appetite. Um, so just please keep him in your prayers. Continue to pray for us. Still have the uh, GoFundMe campaign going on and also the Facebook my Facebook fundraiser going on. So if you'd like to donate, if you're able to donate to our cause, you can go ahead and do so. Only if you want to and only if you are able to, okay? All right, guys, let's let's kick this, right? Let's kick this. Let's talk about assist to ambulate using the transfer belt, right? So there are two critical element steps in this skill, step number three and step number six. Step number three, basically pertaining to um, ensuring that the person, the client is wearing non-skid shoes, all right? So a lot of folks, um, you know, ask the question, what if that person isn't, you know, that I'm testing with isn't wearing non-skid shoes? Well, you have no control over that, right? Neither do the NAEs. So what I like to tell my students is just to make sure whatever shoes that they come in, make sure you initiate uh, putting them on, meaning you have to pick them up and you have to tell that person, here are your shoes, go ahead and put them on for me, okay? Or here are your shoes, do you need help putting them on? And I always tell uh, my students, the person that is acting as the uh, client, uh, tell them no, that you don't need help and just take your, take your shoes from their hands and put your own shoes on because what's going to happen is if that client says, yes, I need help, and the testing candidate starts putting, actually putting on uh, the client's shoes for them, the NAE is going to stop them and tell the, you know, the client, hey, you, you know, put on your own shoes, all right? So to save time, if you are acting as the client and that person hands you your shoes and says, do you need help putting your shoes on? Just say no. OK, and take your shoes and put your own shoes on, because that is what is going to happen anyways. OK, if that if that testing candidate starts to actually put your shoes on for you again, the NAE is going to stop them and tell that acting candidate, put your own shoes on. All right. So that is critical um, element. Step number three, critical element. Step number six is um, pertaining to you assisting that person into a seated position on the side of the bed until their feet are flat on the floor. Now this step, this step number six is the step that usually causes uh, the candidate to receive an automatic fail. Why? Um, the candidate will assist the person to sit up. They'll swivel the person around to the edge of the bed. But once that happens, they remove their hands from the person, okay? And they tell the person, okay, go ahead and, uh, you know, scooch up to the edge of the bed until your feet are flat on the floor. Once you remove your hands from that person, you are no longer assisting that person into a seated position with their feet flat on the floor, okay? Yeah, you assisted them to sit up in bed, you uh, you know, swung them around to the side of the bed, but then you removed your hands. Once you remove your hands, you're no longer assisting, okay? And this is the step, step number six, uh, that causes a lot of candidates to automatically fail the, the skill, and that is the reason why. Once they get the person seated at the side of the bed, they remove their hands, and then they tell the person, you know, go ahead and scooch up until your feet are flat on the floor, okay? Another reason, an, another cause of them failing 
they may actually continue to assist that person, okay, hands on that person, but the person's feet are not flat on their floor. The toes are. Hi. Hi, Rhonda. Um, you can actually, you can actually, you know, I'm not familiar with yoga belts, um, but if they have like a buckle on them, um, you could actually use those to practice if that's what you're wanting to practice with. But you got to keep in mind uh, what type of buckle does that yoga belt have, right? Because your gait belts, uh, some gait belts have the snap. So it all depends on what type of gait belts um, are at your testing site. Some have the buckles that snap together. Others have where you have to feed um, the belt into, you know, the first loop through the teeth and then the second loop, right? As a matter of fact, let me go run over here and get one real quick. Okay, guys, I'm sorry I had to leave the screen. I actually ran there and back, right? So this is the gate belt that um, we have, that I have at um, our training site. And we also have the same type of gate belt um, at our testing site, right? So again, I'm not familiar with how, um, you know, yoga belts look or, you know, how the buckle is on the yoga belts. But if you're just using it to, you know, practice, then that's fine. You can you can do that, okay? Um, I do want to show you this belt, though. Um, on the tag, the belts usually have a tag on them, and this is not true to all gate belts, okay? But for the most part, it is, okay? If you're having difficulty trying to figure out how to put the gate belt on, okay? The tag is always, well, not always, but on this gate belt and gate belts like this one is always going to be on the outside, okay? That will let you know that you're putting it on correctly, okay? Why? Because you have to loop the belt into the loop. Uh-oh, I'm sorry, I got it all twisted. Into teeth first. Okay. So these are the teeth right here. So your belt should actually enter the loop that has the teeth in it. Okay. First, right. And then you want to make sure that the buckle is not um, directly over the navel. So as you're putting it on, you may have to twist it around. Okay. Twist it around just like so. Right. And you want to make sure that it is tight. Once you do that, you have to put it through this second loop, okay? And you see the tag is on the outside, right? You have to put it through the second loop. If you do not put it on the second loop, let me see, you will not receive credit for step number seven, which is before assisting to stand, applies transfer belt securely, right? Securely around the person's waist. If you do not put it through the second loop, that is not going to be considered the belt being secure, okay? So you have to put it through the second loop. This excess, you can either leave it hanging or how I train my students to do, just tuck it in, okay? Tuck it in just like this, all right? Just like this, and you're good to go, okay? Belt buckle is not directly over the navel, it's off to the side. I can fit two finger breaths, so I know it's not too tight, right? Um, if it's too loose, again, it's not going to be secure. So if you have it like this, if you're able to fit your whole hand in it, you need to tighten it up, okay? You need to tighten it up because that is not considered secure. You want it tight, snug, okay, enough to where you can fit two finger breaths in, but you cannot stick your whole hand in, all right? So if you can fit two finger breaths, that's two fingers, it's not too tight, okay? It may feel real tight, but it's not. And always remember that once you stand that person up, the belt is, is gonna loosen up a bit, all right? So you have to have it just like this, teeth first and then into the second loop. If you only put it through the first loop like this, 
or even if you tuck it in, it's not considered secure, right? It's not considered secure. So you have to, uh, you have to stream this loop, the belt itself through both loops. Again, it's going to go through the loop that has the teeth. Okay. First. All right. And then into the second loop again, this can be an indicator, but I let my students know about this, but I also tell them don't rely on the tag because on some gate belts, the tag is actually on the other side. Okay. All right. Okay. But that's just, I mean, you can use the tag if you want to, but I just tell my students straighten out that belt, belt buckle, and then just find the teeth. And this is where you're going to put it in. All right. Okay. So the two element steps, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Two element steps, steps number three and step number six. Okay. Step number three, you have to make sure that person is wearing shoes before you assist them to stand. Step number six, you have to assist that person in a seated position on the side of the bed with their feet flat on the floor. So again, you have to have hands on your on that person until their feet are flat on the floor, okay? I'm just gonna check the chat here. All right, Rhonda, so hopefully I answered that question for you, okay? So we've talked about the two critical element steps, okay? Um, the, you know, the step number three just has that one variable, person has to be wearing shoes, but you have to, you have to um, initiate the putting on of the shoes, meaning you have to pick that person's shoes up from the ground and you have to hand them their shoes. You don't have to actually put them on, but you have to hand them their shoes. If that person reaches over and grabs their shoes and puts their own shoes on, you won't get credit for the step. You will automatically fail that skill. So if that happens, tell that person, uh, 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 Put your shoes back down, okay? Put your shoes on the ground. I will get them for you, okay? All right? And then step number six, you actually have three variables. One, if you don't assist that person um, into a seated position, um, you can automatically fail. If you do not assist them seated at the side of the bed, you will automatically fail. If you do not assist them uh, seated, to on the side of the bed until their feet are flat on the floor, you will automatically fail the skill. Um, so a lot to the side and assist them until their feet are flat on the ground. Yeah, you can do that if you want to, but most of the beds at the, um, at the test sites are your older beds, right? And it takes a while for that head or bed to, you know, raise or to rise and get that person in a seated position. So now you're talking about time, wasting time, um, when it's just as quick as for you just to interlock your arms with that person, put your hand on the back of their shoulder blades and give them uh, a cue on the count of three, I'm gonna sit you up, one, two, three, and sit that person up, okay? Takes much quicker, uh, less takes less time than actually sitting there waiting for that head of bed to raise up, okay? But if you'd like to do it that way, if you feel more comfortable doing it that way, then by all means, you can do it that way, okay? Um, so there are six steps, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? Steps three through eight that are order dependent, not on each other, but they are order dependent with you assisting that person to stand. So steps three through eight, you can actually perform in any order you want to as long as you perform them before you assist that person to stand, okay? The way I demonstrate in my video is just the most logical way uh, to perform those steps, okay? They are not order dependent on each other. However, they are order dependent on step number nine, you actually standing that person, okay? Um, so um, always remember, you gotta provide privacy. You have to explain the procedure, right? That's gonna be one of the first things you do, explain what you are going to do. Hi, Ms. Carla. Uh, provide the person with privacy, um, and then, you know, you're going to go ahead and assist them into the seated position, or you can even put, you know, have them put their shoes on while they're in bed, but, 
that's just, I don't know, seems like it would be too uncomfortable, so I don't train my students to do it that way, right? Assist them to the side of the bed in a seated position until their feet are flat on the floor, okay? Before you stand that person, you wanna make sure that you either check or lock the brakes on the bed wheels, okay? So you gotta do that. Um, if you don't, okay, it may not cause you to fail the skill, but you will get a flag for safety, okay? And if this is the only safety flag that you have, you it probably won't cause you to fail the entire skills exam, but you'll get a flag for safety, okay? So just make sure those things are done um, before you stand that person. When you hold that gate belt, okay? When you hold the gate belt, and I believe it's, um, let's see. Step number 10. Okay, step number 10, it specifically says on signal, gradually assist client to stand by grasping transfer belt on both sides, okay? That's key, both sides, meaning both of your hands have to grasp that gate belt when assisting that person to stand. You can't just use one hand, okay? You have to use both. And you wanna make sure they are cupped upwards like this, okay? Your fingertips are facing uh, the ceiling, okay? They're upwards, okay? And you wanna make sure that you have that gate belt just like this, not like this, okay? Not holding it like this, okay? But your hand is actually cupping it, okay? And it's up, so it's gonna be both hands on either side, okay? Um, when you are assisting that person to stand, you need to make sure that your knees are touching their knees. If your knees are not touching their knees, you are not going to get credit for step number, let's see, step number 10, okay? You won't get credit for that step, all right? And the NAE will be positioned to where he or she um, is looking to see whether or not or they can view whether or not your knees are touching the client's knees, okay? So make sure your knees are touching, all right? Um, what's another, another step that a lot of folks miss? Oh, the prearranged step, okay, the cues. If you tell that person on the count of three, I'm going to assist you to stand, count to three folks is not one to stand you only count it to two so you did not follow your own pre-arranged signal okay so you will not receive credit for step number eight and you will not receive credit for step number nine if you do that so if you tell the person on the count of three i'm going to stand you you need to actually count to three one two three then assist the person to stand, okay? So that's two steps that you could receive a no on if you give a prearranged signal with counting to three and you only count to two and then stand the person, all right? Um, so when walking, step number 11, okay, you um, need to stand behind the person and off to one side, okay, to walk. If you're ambulating that person and you're, um, be, you know, completely behind them, you're not going to receive credit for step number 11. If you're walking that person and you are side by side, like this is your client and this is you and y'all are walking side by side, you will not receive credit for step number 11. So this is your client right here. This is you. And this is what I tell my students, go ahead and stand directly behind the person and then take one step to the side. Okay, so it's going to look like this, how you're ambulating, okay, holding that transfer belt, ambulating the person just like this, all right? So just to, uh, you know, for training purposes, if you need to figure out, okay, what is behind the person off to one side, when you stand that person, stand directly behind them, and then just take one step off to either side, okay? It doesn't matter which side, okay? And then this is how you should be, look. This is the client. This is you. This is how you should look while ambulating the person, okay? Whether you ambulate 
holding that transfer belt with one hand or two hands, it really doesn't matter. Okay, you can ambulate them with holding the transfer belt with one hand or with two. However, it does matter when you are assisting them to stand. You have to have both hands grasping in an upward position that gait belt, okay? Um, so usually the NAE will give you the route, tell you where he or she wants you to walk the person. They will also tell you how many steps they want you to walk the person. It's usually 10 steps. So they may tell you to walk 10 steps forward and then just turn around, take the client back to the bed, or they may tell you walk 10 steps. I mean, walk five steps away from the bed and then turn around and walk five steps back to the bed. So you have to listen uh, to what the NAE instructs you to do, okay? Just remember, once you get that person back, you don't have to assist them um, into you know a seated position on the bed. You can just take them back to the bed, have them turn around, say, can you feel the bed behind your legs or behind your knees? And they'll say, yeah, and then you say, okay, you can go ahead and sit down now, right? Um, so once you get them back over to the bed, you want to make sure you remove that gate belt, okay? That's a forgotten step, not removing the gate belt. So make sure you remove that gate belt. Please, please make sure you give that person the call light. I always tell my students, give it to them in their hand, okay? So that's going to leave no room for that NAE to question whether or not that person can reach the call light, okay? Give it to them in their hand. They're human. They can hold it, okay? Um, and then, of course, um, you don't have to lie the person back down in bed, okay? You can leave them seated. Um, and you can leave them seated in the... Uh, in a seated position on the side of the bed, uh, the NAE will usually tell that person, okay, go ahead and lay back down, you know, take your shoes off, lay back down in the bed or whatever. Usually the NAE will instruct that person. However, I tell my students, if you know that you're going to have a skill that requires that person to be in a supine position, then you can just go ahead and tell them, okay, you know, go ahead and lay back down in the bed, you know, take your shoes off and lay back down in the bed for me, okay? If not, the NAE will usually um, instruct the acting candidate or the client what they need them to do, okay? And then, as always, I always encourage folks to go ahead and do your closing procedures. You know, you have your call light within reach, bed is still in a low safe position, bed walls are locked, privacy is maintained. You're going to take your gate belt, take it to the designated dirty uh, supply area. Then you can verbalize washing hands and skill complete. Okay. Before you state skill complete, okay, give yourself a few seconds, okay, just to go back through your mind uh, how you perform the skill, okay, um, because you don't want to be quick in saying skill complete, um, just in case you may have performed something incorrectly or you omitted a step, uh, those few seconds will give you time to recognize that and you can make a self-correction, okay? Once you say skill complete, that's it. You cannot make any self-corrections, okay? So give yourself a couple of times washing or a couple of seconds washing hands, skill complete, okay? All right, guys, that will do it for this critical element steps video on assist to ambulate using transfer belt. Remember, the two critical element steps are step number three and step number six. Um, and you want to pay close attention to step number four, which is checking or locking uh, the bed wheel brakes. Um, also, you want to um, step number seven, okay? where it specifically states that the transfer belt has to be placed on that person securely, okay? Also, it cannot be, I'm so glad, st step number seven, two variables in this non-critical element step. Transfer belt has to be placed on securely, so that's passing it through both loops. That's making sure that it is snug, okay? Meaning you cannot stick your whole hand in, but you're able to stick two finger breasts in, okay? The second variable is uh, placing the belt over the clothing slash gown. 
Okay, you as the acting candidate will be in a gown. So that is going to be your clothing, okay? You as the testing candidate, you need to make sure that you understand that the person's clothing is going to be a gown. So if there is a gap, an opening in the back, and that gate belt is touching the person's street clothes, you're not going to get credit for this step. Okay, so I train my students and you can uh, watch it in the demonstration video. Once you have that person seated at the side of the bed, go ahead and close that gown as much as possible and then secure it at the waist. Okay, tie the waist strap. That way, um, when you're putting on the gate belt, you know, because you're going to be moving that gate belt around. And as you're doing that, that gown will move itself open. Okay, in the back causing the belt to touch the person's street clothes, all right? But if you have that gown, if you pull it closed as much as possible and then tie it um, at the waist while you're moving that belt, manipulating it, even though the gown may be moving a little bit, it's going to stay closed in the back, okay? Um, and then always double check, right? Once you... Um, Get it that belt on where you want. Go ahead and look behind the person and make sure that uh, the gown or the belt is over the gown and is not touching the person's street clothes. All right. OK, guys, that is it. Um, don't forget, click on the link in the description area of this video to subscribe to my the Bougie Instructor Vlogs channel. Um, it's going to be a great channel once I get it up and running, uh, but you can go ahead, click on it, and subscribe uh, now to it. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you'll be notified when I start uploading videos to that channel. Again, check your privacy settings because if you have it to where your name cannot be seen once you subscribe, um, you will not be eligible for any of the giveaways that I will be hosting uh, on that channel. Okay, it's going to be a great channel, folks. Hey, keep commenting. Uh, letting me know you're passing your exams. I tell you, I, I got like, I think about six folks uh, to comment yesterday that they passed um, Oklahoma, a couple from California, a couple from Texas, one from New York State, and one from Washington State. And then in the past, I've had, you know, folks from the Philippines and Canada to tell me that they have passed. And Africa and Jamaica. Yes. So uh, my videos are reaching a lot of people. Again, pass it forward. If my videos are helping you, um, you, you know, it's, I'm sure it's safe to say that they can help others. So if you know folks that are uh, currently participating in a nurse aid training program, maybe they're waiting on their start date to participate. Um, maybe they've already completed the training and they're just waiting uh, t their test date. Uh, go ahead and refer them to my channel um, if they are testing under Pearson View, okay? I have had a couple of pro metrics um, folks and uh, from Florida um, and also um, I think I've only had like two headmaster uh, folks that um, you know told me my my videos were beneficial to them also okay so I gotta go guys love you all thank you so much for your support and I will talk to you later ciao don't forget subscribe to my new channel ciao